What's the best way to paint a cat's nose? In today's video, I'm going to show you all the important early stages. The foundation wash layer. This will ultimately give your cat's nose shape, form and depth. Now colour wise we know it's sort of a pink colour isn't it? But let's get some testing paper first of all. Get an old brush, that one there will do, an old synthetic brush. And we'll try out a little bit of a lizarin crimson first. Let's have a go with that one a minute. Let's see how that looks. Mm, see that's too kind of deep red isn't it that? When you look at that nose, it's more of a sort of pinky red, isn't it? So, what have we got for that then? Let's try a little bit of Scarlet Lake within that Lizard Crimson. Just playing with the colours, that's all I do when I'm testing colours out. Maybe, maybe, a touch of Cadmium Orange. Try that. Now that's changed it quite well actually, and that's quite close, I must admit, it's not far away. If you thin that paint out as well, you'll end up with something like that. So a little more cadmium orange. Now it's too much cadmium orange in there now. A little bit more lizard and crimson. So you can just test it out on some scrap watercolor paper to get some general idea on the color that you're looking for. And that is quite close. Got the idea? So that's all you need to do when you're working on the colors. So let's go for that triple mix, shall we? Let's see how it works. So remember that was Elysian Crimson, Scarlet Lake, and also Cadmium Orange. And try to make this more to a milky consistency. Colour mixed up, ready to go. I'm going to use a size 4 brush, and this one is by Rosemary & Co, series 301. Give you some ideas what I'm using there. So grab some clean water and wet the nose. Just wet it. Come on, give it a wet. All the way over. Now, where you've got the pencil here, I'm going to tickle that pencil just to soften that pencil out a little bit. Because the only thing is, when you start to put paint over the top of pencil, that pencil can be sealed in underneath that paint. Which means if you want to remove it later on, well, it's not very easy. You have to do some lifting off work to be able to remove it. That goes all the way down there. We've got a bit of pink in there actually, haven't we? Just inside the nostril area, or just below the nostril. It's actually white, but I think it's reflective light from the nose to be honest. So I'm going to put a little bit of pink in there as well. If you put your head to one side, you can just see where this is nice and wet. Right. And then all the way down to where it goes a little V, just down below the nose there, just about that area there. That's it. I'm going to go slightly higher than I need to add the paint. And that's because I want it to blend out that little bit towards the fur. And that is nice and damp now. So you can probably just about see that on the, there you go, that's better. You can see that on the camera there, and that's how wet I want that to be for that paper. Okay, here we go. Straight into the colour, I'm going to drop the colour on. Now, because I've got water on the paper, you find the water will dilute this paint. And I wanted to do that because we don't want to go too dark too quick with the colour. Sand that all the way over the nose. Don't worry too much about the changes in colour at the moment. We're going to add a little bit of colour into this damp paint shortly anyway, just to kind of vary it. All over the top. And this kind of goes more of a, like a bit of a bump, like an elongated M. So all the way down and back up again. Then down towards the little V, the bottom of the nose here. 
Remember that reflective light I was talking about around there, looking around here as well? Let's pop that in. Okay, get that brush quick rinse out. And wet above this area, first of all, re wet that area there, then tickle that in. So you've got a gradual blend. And this is where you can start to drop in a little bit more colour again, the same colour, nothing different, not at this present time. Just by tapping some extra colour over the top, just where it's needed. And when you really study that nose, you can see it's actually richer and darker around here, isn't it? And also the edge of the nostrils there. Well, there you go, around there. And probably underneath this one here, look. Right to the underside there, just about there. Let it blend. Under here and there. Rinse that brush out again. Then lightly soften down the edges of where the nostrils are. The nostril holes. Like that. Just to lightly blend it. Just working it carefully. Now I'm going to get a little bit more of our cadmium orange. Just pop that into one corner. A little bit more actually. This is where you can just change the colour a little bit. Just in places really. Just to vary it. Another clean brush again, and you can lift off a little bit of paint here and there so you can create some lighter marks. So as this dries, it will fade, it will blend. It's so around there. Now, as the paper does start to dry, you'll be able to kind of judge it and readjust some of the colours. Because as it starts to dry, you can put more colour in, and you find that colour won't spread quite as far on the paper. So I can drop a little more colour in there, still quite wet in there though. It's all about drying times, isn't it? Trying to get that timing just about right. Where if you want to put a little bit of extra colour in, and you don't want it to blend and spread everywhere, you got to allow it to dry that little bit longer before you drop it onto the paper. down to there. A little more around there, little taps. That should soften and blend as it dries. Oh, by the way, if you're interested in the full nose painting tutorial, it's now available in my online school. I'll pop a link to the top right for you. Take a little bit of paint off that side there, just to create a bit of a highlight, just down those sides there a lot, like that. Then if it's too sharp, give it a bit of a tickle or drop a little bit more colour in places just to change it slightly. And there you go. Don't worry about it looking too bitty and full of holes in places because we're going to put lots of detail over the top anyway. Okay, let's give it a dry. Now we can't paint a cat without taking a look at those gorgeous eyes. The video to the top right is a live paint along here on YouTube in which I do just that. Why not join me now and I'll see you there.